Hey there, welcome back to Parlay. This prompt was paid for by Zesmeril, who's talking about basically the pros and cons of Banshee in Warframe. Zesmeril says, probably an idea better suited for a full video, but I've wanted to break some expectations. What is the worst Warframe, and why isn't it X, in this case Banshee? Pros and cons, potential build ideas, potential investment costs, etc. More of an exploration of why someone might use the frame in particular. Sure, I have a lot of notes first. Uh, I don't really do full videos on single things at the moment. I don't think it's useful, usually, uh, for a full video. I think unless the, the build or the, the game mechanic requires a very specific explanation, it's better for the audience to be taught how to do the thing. Um, and usually it isn't complicated enough, in my opinion, that a short video explaining only that one thing would be would be good. Um, so I don't currently do those. I think parlay is a good place for those. I think the thing is that when it's when there's a complicated enough reasoning behind using a thing in a game, it probably just warrants longer discussion or it's not for a lot of people. Uh, in Banshee's case, I don't think it's either. I think Banshee's perfectly usable, uh, but I definitely wouldn't want to make a full video about this. I think that parlay is a great place for that. Um, Banshee, and really a discussion about why you would use a given game piece in a game in general. These build system games that have options in them, you're intended to pick what you like, there isn't a correct answer, it's not a puzzle to be solved, you can pick the frame in this case, in Warframe's case, that you like. These games are trying to provide you with compelling trade-offs, so asking what the pros and cons are for a given Warframe, for example, uh, that's exactly what Warframe wants you to do, in my opinion. That is, that's The game wouldn't be designed this way if they didn't want you to do that. So there definitely are a lot. Um, I think the best way to do it is to divide them into three, right now I'm feel, in my notes it's three categories. The effectiveness-related reasons why you might use Banshee. The fun-related reasons why you might use Banshee, we'll get into how you could even talk about that later. And the in my notes it says meta game design slash cost related reasons. Um, why, why did the developers make Banshee? Why might you end up with Banshee for a reason other than effectiveness or fun? What, what unique niche does this Warframe have? those kinds of reasons, if that makes sense. I think that's separate from those other two things. Um, so effectiveness first, that would be the the obvious place to start, but not the place that we will finish, because I don't think it's the most important. In fact, it's the least important. Uh, in games like Warframe, I think generally the game is trying to set you up to be able to do good enough damage, survive well enough, automatically, without having to worry about what specific equipment you bring too much. So the effectiveness category should, if the game has done its job well, the effectiveness category should be boring, because you shouldn't need it, basically. Uh, I think in Warframe, pretty simple, a lot of Warframes you can evaluate based on how rounded they are. Do they have a way to stay alive or, or some defenses along with a damage increase? And if they don't have one of those things, do they have a stronger thing in the other category to make up for it? I think Banshee basically trades a little bit of durability she doesn't really have unusual health or armor, she's got low amounts of those things, and she has only a skosh of crowd control, really just silence, uh, and in exchange, Banshee has a, a stronger than usual damage increase, I would say Sonar is a stronger than usual damage increase. If you don't know uh, about Banshee or you don't play Warframe, uh, Banshee has this ability where you put little vulnerability points, basically, on enemies. You highlight their weak points, is I guess the flavor. But in practice, you randomly mark some parts of their body. And if you hit those parts, you get a big damage increase, really, really big, and you can increase it with strength mods. Banshee also has an augment for her uh, first ability, which hits people with a sound wave, knocks them over. That's not always great, but it knocks them over, and you can very easily make it remove all armor. You just go boop, and they have no armor. That's a pretty powerful combination to have right off the bat. You can give yourself a big damage multiplier, and you can just remove all enemy armor right away. That's that's a lot. That's good. Uh, and so in exchange, Banshee doesn't really have any obvious measure of uh, true durability. Basically, what you get is silence. You get a, 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 a threshold and then an area within the threshold. If enemies cross the threshold, they're staggered as their hearing goes out, basically. 
And then within the threshold, they, they're deafened, you know, they don't hear sounds, some abilities don't work on them, uh, etc. You can manipulate the, the range and duration of silence to make it an interesting form of crowd control, but it's definitely pretty, the way I like to think of it is kind of analog, kind of driving stick shift, the crowd control of the enemies. You can make it have very low duration and very high range, and you've basically made a pause button. You can click the ability, pay the energy cost, probably not much because you used fleeting expertise to reduce the duration, which made it more efficient, uh, and enemies just, ugh, and then it's over. They can't get staggered again during its duration, so if the duration is very short, you could just stagger, stagger, stagger whenever you need it. That's definitely flying by the seat of your pants a little bit, staying alive, right? But it's doable, sure. And they are open to finishers, too, so you could get in close and punch them in the face before they know what's going on. You can use high duration as well, so when you enter a room, you get a second to react as enemies are whoa, momentarily confused. And then if you just kill everything really fast whenever it sees you, then you're maybe okay. Eximus enemies and enemies with... um that are in the presence of a, a nullifier are not going to be vulnerable to that. So it's not perfect. But Banshee has some some stuff in exchange for that relative vulnerability. If that seems a bit awkward, it seems like that's how I have to stay alive, really? Yeah, okay, but you get a really good damage increase in exchange. Um, so yeah, I, I would say great damage boosts, uh, perfectly usable crowd control, it's just kind of weird. Uh, so yeah, you drop survivability for basically sonar, uh, the, the armor removal ability on the frame innately is nice, but really nothing special, I don't think. And of course, if you have the helmet system and Archon shards, there isn't much meaning to saying that the frame isn't innately tanky or has kind of low armor, because you can add those things. In that sense, it's kind of better for the frame to be stronger in one category. They're extreme in one category, and then they've just got something that you may or may not consider to be a weakness, and if you do consider it a weakness, you can patch it up. That's not a bad place to be. Um, so I think there's the perfectly ordinary situation Banshee has, um, as I think pretty much all frames are. Now, I think it's good to stop here for a moment and say, so why do people freak out about, about that stuff so much? Um, people don't seem to broadly agree that Banshee or lots of Warframes in Warframe are in a very normal place. So why don't they? Why is that? I think part one is that it's relative, of course. A lot of aspects of comparing the frame are, are you know, not absolute. In, in absolute terms, I think we can agree Warframe is reasonably balanced because you could just kill everything with your guns and put a damaging ability on every Warframe. And then if you can stay alive, and you can, there's not even that much of a punishment for dying, then you can most certainly do every mission with every frame up to the high difficulties. Um, that's not in question. And so people must be saying that the frame is relatively less worthwhile. And the reasons for that, I guess this is still reason A or 1 or however I numbered them, there's kind of two parts. One is the no one knows all builds thing. They might simply not know or not view a certain aspect of the Warframe as a strength, or they might be overlooking the strength because they're distracted by the frame's weakness. It's very common to hear people say things like, well, but because they have low health or something, it doesn't even matter what their other abilities are. But if they actually were forced into a discussion where they talked about what those abilities are, they probably would agree that, okay, yeah, that is good damage, but she's so squishy, you know? And then suddenly, yeah, okay, that's that's a perfectly accurate representation of the Warframe. So that's pretty common, uh, in my experience anyway. And the other reason would be uh, that they might not have some of the same uh, perspective or, or, I guess, meta on their account. They might not have the helmet system. They might have a certain collection of other frames that make it seem less worthwhile that Banshee does these things. For example, maybe they have a lot of Warframes that have very powerful damage boosts of their own already, and so by comparison, Banshee just has like also powerful damage boosts. What's the point? If you compare only Banshee and Gyre, if you said to me, okay, Gyre is kind of strong in the damage category, but is also a little more vulnerable, kind of like you said Banshee is, but Zandi Gyre gives you Chain Lightning, on your attacks. Are you really trying to tell me that that and a bunch of crit chance is not better than Banshee's sonar points? 
I, I am trying to tell you that. Yeah, there are different strengths. But do I think Gyre is uh, preferable? To me, yeah, I do. Uh, they're obviously good at different things, but they are definitely good at different things. Yeah, sure. My point is, if that was your point of comparison, suddenly Banshee seems very mundane, at least. Whereas if you had basically no Warframes with damage-boosting abilities, or what you would consider to be damage-boosting abilities, Banshee might really stick out because you would feel those damage boosts much more. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So I think that that's uh, a very important aspect of this uh, effectiveness point. Overall, 10 minutes into the parlay, the effectiveness discussion is, in my opinion, really not worth mentioning once you get into it. That is just kind of duplicated for every frame of the game. It's uh, worth having. It's not. This is not a bad question. I hope it doesn't sound that way. <laughs> I just became very self-conscious that that sounded rude to Zesmeril's question. I mean it more in general in terms of uh, thinking about how these games are structured. The game is built in such a way to make the effectiveness concern as relatively unimportant as possible, I would argue. Otherwise, there would be no point in choosing, because for the effectiveness question to be important, that basically means that it is, to some degree, kind of wrong to pick certain options. And if the game has lots of options that you're intended to pick, then making some of them kind of wrong is incorrect game design. That would be mistaken game design. Why would, why would you put your efforts there? So by the fact that the game intends you to choose, we can infer that either the game is just bad <laughs> or, uh, or that indeed it isn't of high importance what the effectiveness part is. Uh, but again, that will depend on people's perspective. That will depend on the, the weapons people have is another thing in Warframe that we haven't mentioned. But that's outside of the scope of this parlay. Let's get into the fun part, which is discussing fun, fun things about the frame. And, and just in general is, of course, what I've been doing. The fun part. I've been on a big fun kick, that sounds ridiculous to say, in gaming lately. I've been really trying to focus more on how you can engage with a build option, for example, being fun to people. It doesn't seem like something that is objectifiable in a way we can all talk about. At first, it seems like people are just going to say, but I just find that fun, so all discussion is rendered pointless because I just find that fun. And I don't think that's true. I think that you can absolutely optimize for fun. Fun is just a way of changing the parameters uh, the, the height of the net, the shape of the net that you need to hit the ball over to succeed according to your own preferences. Maybe I like to play tennis with a circular net, and who are you to judge me if I do so, right? Yeah, sure, fine. It doesn't mean that there wouldn't be any strategy in how to hit a ball through or around a circular net better. It would just be pretty specific, it'd be pretty idiosyncratic strategy. But provided we have a solid understanding of what the sort of default strategy would be, there's no reason we can't adapt that. Nothing wrong with that. Banshee then has a couple of strengths that stick out much more when you focus on whether they might be fun to someone. After all, another way to discuss fun is thinking about uniqueness. What does Banshee do that's unique? Those are things that are more likely to be a reason someone finds Banshee fun, because they can't find that fun on other frames if they do not do those things. <laughs> so, for example, you would expect to hear a lot of people who are interested in stealth gameplay say they like Banshee, because Banshee is one of only a few frames that interacts with sound mechanics. If people like finishers, Banshee has a notable finisher-enabling ability, for example. It's not the only one or the best one. The best one does not exist, but it is a one, and there are not a ton of them, and so there's actually a decent number. But uh, but sure, you know, it's being able to hit a pause button that then opens enemies to finishers. If you need or want to do finishers, this really changes things pretty quick for you. Being able to just hit a button and enemies are open to finishers, rather than having to finagle it some other way. There's a Riven challenge that uh, involves doing a finisher, and th this really changes that quite a bit. So a unique kind of stun, for example. I could also imagine, you know, Sonar gives you damage boost in a very unique way. You might be interested in trying to hit the very specific sonar spots. Now, I don't think that's powerful because there are weapons that can reliably get the sonar damage boost or hit a sonar spot without really aiming at them. Flamethrowers, mostly. Uh, definitely weapons with an AoE. 
uh, or weapons that are a bit inaccurate. A lot of fast firing weapons in general will just kind of incidentally hit some sonar spots, and I think that that is the most overall effective way to use the ability. But it's the most overall effective way to use the ability because you don't need to make any concessions toward how the ability works. You can just use a large category of guns like normal and you get the damage boost. That is probably the opposite of what a lot of people would find to be the fun way to use the ability. You know what's kind of fun sometimes? Helios has a precept that puts one mark, very much like Banshee's marks, on an enemy. And if they happen to overlap, they stack. At least the last time I checked, they did. When you, every once in a blue moon, hit that, that spot and you see some totally nutso number because they're very large multipliers, um, that could be really very satisfying to someone. You can imagine the type of person, you've met people who would like that, you know what I mean? So that's an example. Um, I think that Banshee is relatively strong in that category because she's relatively weird compared to other options. Uh, she has some peculiar abilities. The way you get the damage is a bit funky. Uh, she's not just checking the boxes. That's the biggest problem with her, if you want to look at it that way, but that can be viewed as a strength of her design. All that being said, I do think Banshee is a little bit of an old design in Warframe, and that means that when Banshee was made, the developers didn't have as much of an understanding as they do now of how to use their game's tools, knobs, to make something unique feeling as much as possible, powerful, as much as possible, and, you know, good assuaging the player's concerns while having its own drawbacks. I think that Banshee's drawbacks are really boring. I think that's related to fun too. It's not like she activates a very high power damage mode, but becomes very vulnerable, and you can choose to do that or not. She just is mundanely squishy. You see what I mean? You could definitely design a frame, and I think there are frames designed this way, that are very feast or famine. If they've got their uh, very strong overshield generation active or something, then they're very tanky. But if they fail to balance all of those things, then suddenly they're quite vulnerable. If you build a Harrow to use all of his abilities, it's quite difficult to keep them all going sometimes. But if you can do it, you're very powerful. And then if you kind of fall off the, the bicycle, then you're in danger. That's a much more interactive way of making Harrow squishy or you know inconsistent or requiring high upkeep uh, rather than banshee who is who simply has bad base stats but then has some good damage buffs right um that's not bad necessarily like it doesn't really matter in some ways you could argue it's actually easier to fix that type of problem with like the helmet system and archon shards and stuff but i do think that that type of weakness is less fun yes i think weaknesses can be a big part of the fun of a game piece. And I don't think that Banshee's weaknesses are fun. Um, they might be fun to some people. They might be fun to some people because it feels like you need to get into a room and assassinate everybody before you take one hit, which will definitely kill you. So uh, it's not absolute, but I do think it's a lot less of an interactive way of being unpowerful at something, which I do feel like correlates with being less exciting. I'm just not that interested in Banshee dying to a stiff breeze. That just isn't I, I don't, it, it makes me feel nothing, you know, <laughs> um, but I'm not every player. So yeah, again, I'm sure there are some people for whom her squishiness is, is a merit. I've actually seen a video where somebody praises that exact quality in Banshee as like a unique gameplay experience, but it just kind of isn't. It might be something that people encounter on Banshee, but there actually are a lot of other frames that are statistically, you know, their raw stats are weak the same way. It objectively isn't a unique thing about Banshee. So to say that you like that and credit that to Banshee, that's fine. In my evaluation, she doesn't get credit for that. Warframe in general gets credit for offering that experience. But whatever, you could have fun with that on Banshee, sure. Um, That, that was a pretty nice little 9-10 minute chunk too. So let's move on to the third and final part. Sort of meta, game design, cost, other Banshee reasons. <laughs> uh, why, why does this frame exist? Again, this category is a little bit more vague because I just don't know what to call it. Uh, but it begins with looking up the frame. So let's just type in Banshee Warframe into Google. Uh, and I think it, it begins right here. Banshee is a sound-themed Warframe. There you go. Uh, so one reason that ba one reason why Banshee, pros and cons of Banshee, 
is that this is a sound-themed Warframe. Uh, the player may wish for a sound-themed Warframe. The player might start with Volt and wish for what are the other, like, element-themed Warframes. How about the Heat Warframe? Well, you can play Ember, the developers say. I think that's a reason just as much as something for effectiveness, you know, Ember's really good at X, Y, and Z, or fun, Ember really uniquely does X, Y, and Z. You can also say, like, Ember fills the design space of X, Y, and Z. Um, same thing with Banshee. We have a, a, a sound-themed frame. I think that Banshee adds to the roster a little bit more assassin or ninja flavor. Banshee feels a little closer to ninjas and a little further from pirates, which is how I always think of Warframes too. Um, does the Warframe feel more like a space pirate or a space ninja? And I think uh, half-ish of the frames feel more like a space ninja and half-ish feel like space pirates and, or space mercenaries, space wizards instead. However you want to think of it. Uh, so yeah, I think Banshee is uh, puts a, a tick in the Space Ninja category. How do you get Banshee? That that could be a unique thing. Uh, Banshee is a Tenno Lab Warframe. Um, just jogging my memory again. Some of this is performative, you understand. Um, but this is how you you can basically just read this type of answer. Um, a a Tenno Lab themed frame. Well, there should be some of those, and having them be frames that are are quite easy to access maybe makes it uh, nice to have that be a frame that is pretty fragile for some players might feel like, I don't know, this is a pretty specific experience because they can just go right back and build another frame from the dojo as well. And I also think that Banshee is relatively um, different from the other dojo frames, you could think of it that way. I'm not sure whether that's purposeful. Um, it feels like it is, but I don't know. For example, I think that Wukong, Wukong is still a dojo frame, right? Uh, Wukong is pretty uh, simply opposite of Banshee. Um, he's very durable. He's highly focused on mobility. He isn't focused on, you know, making enemies hyper vulnerable to damage with his Warframe powers. That is the thing he doesn't do. You could say that he makes the opposite effectiveness trade-offs from Banshee. So it's kind of nice that you acquire both of those from the same source. Again, it's pure speculation whether that was actually intentional. Some frames just kind of needed to go a place and have moved around over the years. But it's been like that for quite a while, and I don't think that it's completely coincidental. Uh, they could have easily changed it if they felt like that was worthwhile, but they did not. Um, I feel like that means something. The frames could be more spread out, but they're just not. There's, there's a bunch of them here. So yeah, I don't know. I think that that's fairly straightforward. I also feel like Banshee and Wukong, they're, it's it's harder to imagine them being themed around a boss. For example, it's quite satisfying how a fire-themed boss drops ember parts. For example, uh, you have a weird, you know, when you get an invasion, an infested invasion on an assassinate node, that's a forward manifestation, and you can farm Nyx, who's a very odd mind-themed warframe. That unusual activity giving a like very weird frame is cool, I think. Frost you get from a, a boss that freezes themselves, you know. Banshee and Wukong don't have themes that you can, as, at least I can't, as easily imagine what would the boss you'd farm those from be. Now, not all the bosses that drop frame parts, it, it, they don't all really make sense, don't get me wrong. Just to say that that is one of many ways that we could speculate, oh yeah, that it kind of makes sense for Banshee to exist available this way as a dojo frame. She's relatively different from some other dojo frames, and it would be a little weird if she was tied to a boss. Another reason, of course, is that she's just old, and so she's not going to be attached to one of the newer ways of getting a frame, because she just wasn't made after those things were added to the game, and they haven't chosen to change that about her, for example. What else is there to say? I personally think that Banshee is uh, a little neglected too. This feels like the part of the discussion to talk about that. Um, I would argue that one way to have fun and be effective in these games is to look at the frames that the developers are giving support. So for example, what does Banshee do that's kind of unique or is she uniquely strong at? The damage boosting thing and stealth mechanics, sound mechanics. Uh, is there a desperate need for either of those things? Do the developers call to those things a lot? 
that can help inform what the benefit of getting the frame is outside of them being good at those things they just are a frame that does those things how needed are those things damage in warframe for example has become quite commonplace there's a huge huge number of ways to add little bits of damage to stuff if you get a weapon you like you can make it do damage seven ways to sunday there's so many different ways to buff the damage of your weapon you can add warframe mods warframe arcanes a weapon arcane. It might even be multiple weapon arcanes. A weapon X-list mod can reasonably often be leveraged to do some damage, uh, etc. Other weapons can meaningfully increase the weapon's damage. Your companion can increase the weapon's damage. Other helminth abilities from different frames, etc. So a frame being uniquely strong in the damage category, that's good and all, but definitely not something that you, it's not like you won't have that. You know, you could you could brew that yourself if you needed to. So it's not as if damage is not effective or fun. But does the game say that that is a unique benefit of getting Banshee instead of something else? No, I would argue the game doesn't suggest that that's a unique benefit ever, actually. Um, very few things don't give you more damage. <laughs> so uh, that definitely isn't a, a tick in Banshee's corner, in my opinion. Another simple example would be uh, the other way to think of this is how much does the game design around the things the frame does? How much is the game involved with stealth mechanics and sound? Not very much. The developers don't develop a lot of things that get added to the game newly that are tying into those mechanics. So by focusing on Banshee, you're not necessarily focusing on the parts of the game that the developers have, just for better or for worse, arbitrarily for any number of reasons, focused on which gives you a maybe a little bit worse experience. Again, I think that's a negative for Banshee. But again, it could be a positive in the fun category because it isn't something that a lot of other stuff in the game does. So you could consider that more unique. What else is there to say? That was, that was a lot of things. That was a 25-minute discussion on why Banshee uh, and just sort of why you might pick a game piece in general. Anything else I wanted to mention? Meta. Hmm. I don't, I'm not sure what I want to say about this. It feels like both a very short and also kind of a topic for another time because it could be pretty big. The topic of um, a lot of people don't or do play this Warframe. This frame is popular or not. There's a part of me that wants to say that just doesn't matter and leave it at that. But it does matter to a lot of people. And in fact, getting to play lots of different parts of the game, which will correlate with playing things a lot of people don't play, does matter in some way that feels related to the fun category for example um but a lot of people really focus on the thing being different just for the sake of it being different and i think a lot of those people would have a lot more fun if they just didn't care about that because it doesn't matter uh, it's not cool to be different from other people for uh, like a not logically valid reason that's that's just being obstinate <laughs> But uh, but people do that, though. I feel like there's a lot to say about that topic in theory, but in practice, I think for this subject, it's like, I'm not really sure what you would say about that. I think that's in the category of fun, but it has to get some quotation marks. Like, I'm not sure that actually is making people have more fun, but it is a thing people do. I just don't think there's, it's not a very legitimate reason, in my opinion. <laughs> um, this is pretty harsh, but that, yeah, that's how I feel. Um, I've had a lot of people say to me before their complaint about my video or the build I discussed was that thing is a common thing to have discussed. And they're not angry because they've just they they know about it. They're angry because they they think it is troubling that I am not bothered that it is common, basically. Uh why why don't you care about being a follower or something? You know what I mean? And I just don't care either way. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant what other people are doing. Uh, I want to discuss the things I think are interesting. If other people happen to also think the thing is interesting, that's not good nor bad. I, I just means nothing. Um, but uh, yeah, again, it feels like there's kind of more to say there, and I'm not sure what that is. Um, but it does feel a little bit connected to uh, another social aspect that's similar, but I think meaningfully different. Yeah, not too much to say, but uh, players in some types of games, at, at times in history that I experience this in Warframe, will treat you different if you play a thing they believe isn't good, regardless of how it actually is. They're almost always incorrect that it isn't good. Uh, they almost always misidentify 
like that there is a problem or what the problem is but that doesn't really matter you will have a different experience because they are going to insist that they know the thing but they don't so th that means something i feel like in warframe it's not a huge deal like i on my experience is that doesn't come up too much nowadays but uh, and, and in this type of game in general, it, it usually wouldn't come up that much because these games are usually designed to be mostly not of a difficulty level where people would bother to criticize another person's, you know, build choice or whatever. I personally feel like when Warframe is played with a four-person squad, it is rarely difficult. And so it's hard for me to imagine that most people would care enough beyond just venting some frustration or whatever. And in that case, they're not really talking about your frame. I don't know. So, so the, anyway, you see how that feels related, but almost everything in the meta game design or cost category has felt negative. <laughs> maybe that's, maybe it is, I don't know. Um, let me, let me briefly take a moment as a, a little, for me, this feels off topic to your parlay question, but it's piqued my interest. Um, are there meta slash game design slash cost related things that, that are positive? Um, that are not just effectiveness, what's good, what's bad, fun, what's good, what's bad, meta game design cost, what's good, what's bad. Because a lot of the good things for game design would be unique things, which I kind of put in the fun category. But this would be um, the frame might have utility that you don't really need, like quality of life, I feel like is maybe in this call, this category, sure. Um, this frame is very good at something that not that many other frames in the game are good at, it's not particularly good or bad or out of the ordinary, but just why not make available a few options that are stronger in that category? In Warframe, this might be something like movement speed or parkour velocity. Having some frames around that have that as not a major feature. You know, it's 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 nebulous what value you gain from that outside of capture missions, even then, yeah, I don't know. Um, but the game offers it, and I think the reason the game offers it is because it's something the player might want. It's a knob the player might want to turn to make their experience a little bit different. There are various ways to get parkour velocity, movement speed in Warframe besides your Warframe, and a few that are your Warframe. Another way to think of this is that's why there's a helmet ability that doesn't come from any frame that just makes you fast. You can just choose to add that if you want. Why? Why is perspicacity an ability? Perspicacity just makes you succeed at a hacking attempt. Why? Why Why is that a thing? It's not really meant to be for fun or effectiveness. It's kind of in the, the game might as well include this option too. It's like adding something to the options menu, which incidentally, anyway. <laughs> so that could go in this category. That could be positive things. Um, does this frame have any... Uh, so for example, for Banshee, I would say you can build her fourth ability, Augmented, to be you just slap the ground and do a big single wave of damage. It doesn't get extremely high, nor particularly low, if you build it, you know, a lot. It's just kind of a tool that's available. A good, yeah, f I don't know, like fourth of Warframes can be built in such a way that they have a button that just kind of kills every enemy nearby at low levels when you have a very high investment. You can use this when you're a player with a very developed account to just kind of delete like low level enemies that would have been incredibly tedious to kill manually and they pose no threat to you when you have a developed account. So why do you really need to go through a level 20 exterminate? You kind of don't and so you have abilities like this, you know? I, I wouldn't really put that in the effectiveness or fun category. These missions are already trivially easy. I'm not sure I would agree that it actually makes you complete them that much faster either, which is in the effectiveness category. And is it fun? Maybe at first, you know, you get a kind of power fantasy thing. But I hope you can see what I mean when I say the bigger reason is it's kind of a, a, a way to give the player a certain game experience. One last way I like to think about this point and the sort of positive game design stuff is um okay so imagine uh, a game where you assassinate someone and you're going to need to you know get them alone so they'll need you'll need a distraction and you'll need a weapon and you'll need to go in for the kill and succeed on your strength check or whatever and then you're going to need to hide the body and clean up the blood and you know create an alibi and there's all these things you can imagine that right now, I, as the game developer, might look at that and say, all right, how about if I let the player train 
in a skill uh, just a few times throughout their time playing the game. After the first few levels, if the player just doesn't like cleaning up the blood, then they can train in that, and they can then trivialize that game element, that they basically remove it from the game. They feel powerful, great plus. They removed a part of the game they don't like, and I didn't have to know which one that was, because it's personal. They also kind of got to customize the game. They're role-playing, they get to feel powerful, the game is more what they like, in a way that I don't have to know before I make the game. It's great game design, giving the player the option to trivialize very few but a few game mechanics that they just greatly dislike, especially if the game has a lot. If the game features like many steps or many types of mission, the Warframe this would be like mission types or I guess resources you could say. Maybe Warframe doesn't have a ton of this, but there are a few elements, like uh, you have the option to use extractors to farm resources if you just hate running out of a resource and you're stronger in that category. Yet another way to think of this would be my game asks the player to play a little bit daily. Maybe I'll make some kind of concession to players that want to play mostly on the weekends. My game is kind of saying you need to play a little bit daily. But what if the player plays more on the weekends, as much as my game allows? My game kind of resists that. Maybe I can still get that type of player by adding something that is sort of uniquely for them. Again, in Warframe, I think of things like Chroma can boost credit gain, which is almost always completely irrelevant. But if you're the kind of player who really wants to dig into that and just farm a mountain of credits once in a blue moon, Chroma was really useful for that at some points in Warframe's history. It kind of could be now, too. Stuff like that, I guess. Uh, I don't think Warframe has particularly a lot of this. Usually in Warframe, you can just sort of not do a thing if you don't like it, <laughs> uh, except during uh, story quests. And indeed, I think this type of design would help in Warframe. But it still has some of it. Again, maybe the player has the parkour ability to get through missions quickly. Why not offer a good number of frames and other options in the game to let them move fast if they wish to take that strength and kind of trivialize that thing. Uh, not quite the same as my example, but I hope that makes sense. Yeah, and, and there's not a lot to say about Banshee in this category, except for maybe stealth. Um, definitely a fun thing too. Players might just be excited about focusing on stealth, even though I'd argue Warframe doesn't really ask you to do that. But in particular, this is something where it's a convenience. Maybe you just don't want to bother making all your weapons silent, and Banshee allows you a way to trivialize that component if that's something you're interested in. Um, maybe you actually don't think it's fun, but you do need to do it for some reason or something. Again, the game offers you an option where there is actually a few ways you can just make everything silent if you want to just not have to think about that, if that makes sense. So, uh, yeah, I think that's all I have to say. Um, a lot about why somebody might find a frame or really a thing in a game in general, uh, fun or not, good or not, uh, relevant to the game at all or not. <laughs> and some of the answers might be a bit surprising. Again, I think on paper, Banshee scores the worst in the sort of meta slash game design slash cost category. There's a big question of sort of why from a design perspective. Um, but for fun and effectiveness, like everything checks out as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I feel like the way I would summarize this frame is uh, like most frames in Warframe. There's sort of like business as usual, nothing to see here. This is a perfectly sensible game piece, except maybe from the perspective of the design of the game as a whole, which I would reckon most players are not thinking about. But most players probably disagree with what I said during this parlay. And I want to highlight that they probably don't disagree with the meta game designer cost thing as much. Probably more of them don't understand how someone would find Banshee fun or have a different perspective on Banshee's effectiveness. It's only going to be a few people, I have heard this before, um, that would say, I don't really understand why this ability is in Warframe. This is the silence thing, basically. It feels like something Warframe doesn't really earn. I'm not sure Warframe has enough design for that to be like a fully fleshed out mechanic, maybe some more readability would help. I think that's all I have to say. Uh, Zez, a, a straightforward and really good parlay question. Um, I, I think this is a great fit for parlay. I hope I explained that adequately before. Um, I feel like it doesn't really make sense to do a, an analytical video talking about a bunch of game examples, but discussing the process by which a frame might be evaluated for their benefits 
for whatever reason, effectiveness, fun, game design stuff is really interesting. Uh, I would love to do, if people asked for a hundred of these this year, I would be, I could die happy, you know, uh, it, it's, it, it's cool. Uh, a great question. I hope people ask more like this.